everybody and welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and today I'm going to bring you along on the process that I went through to give this girl behind me a major facelift. She started out outdated 70s, 80s style china hutch and now I have turned her into a rustic farmhouse hutch that goes better with the decor that I'm changing my house over to. Back in the 80s I tried to make her that country type 80s feel. I put fabric on the back end of her like it back in here and added ruffles and stuff and it was very cool for then. Unfortunately when I took all that off it left a lot of glue residue and a lot of work for me to go through to get her looking the way she looks now. She has been with me since the 80s. I brought her from Montana. She was moved by movers here to Alaska and they weren't very nice to her. They cracked her, they, they broke her, and I tried to repair her back in the day, but I didn't do a very good job. So you're going to watch me go through that process of getting her all fixed up, camouflaging all of her little imperfections, and getting her all spiffed up and looking as beautiful as she is standing before us. If you like this DIY and you like me and you like the channel, please, please make sure and subscribe. Hit the like button. Add all your comments because I want to hear what you have to say and make sure to share these videos with your friends. If you hit the notification bell, you're going to be notified when I upload future videos. Please make sure to stay till the end because you're going to be able to see just how much this girl messes up and how hilarious it can be. So stay tuned. You're also going to see a little sneak peek of Dexter. He gets in in the background. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned and let's get this DIY going. Corner Hutch Makeover I bought this corner hutch back in the 80s when I lived in Montana. We got it from an estate sale and I fell in love with it. Well, through the move from Montana to Alaska, the movers were not very kind to it. And so you can see it has some areas that has some damage. Um, tried to repair the damage, but didn't, didn't get a very good... Um, I didn't do a very good job at, at repairing the cracks. And then I added some material to the back part of it to make it a look a little bit more of that 80s type country that we are all familiar with. And with, with that being said, it left glue residue behind. So here you can see I'm just removing all of the hardware and getting the doors all off so we can get it prepped and, and ready to go to start with the sanding process. So here you can see I'm removing these 70s looking plastic uh, type I don't know what you call them, things off the doors so I can update it to a more uh, farmhouse look later whenever I add the chicken wire to it. This door had a pretty extensive crack running down the edge, so I'm applying some Gorilla wood glue to the crack so it can have some time to dry before I add the wood filler. Now I'm applying a couple of clamps to the door so it can hold that crack together and get a really good bond um, the glue to, to bond the pieces together so it's a nice seal. This door had been previously repaired or at least attempted to be repaired and it, it didn't fit together very well and so it really needed quite a bit of wood filler to to try to help camouflage um, the, the bad repair. So I'm adding the wood filler here, just using a craft stick in my fingers just to get it nice and smooth so it can dry and I can sand it. So 
this section had a pretty significant crack that ran all the way down halfway down the the outside edge of the cabinet and the repair was a was a better repair job than the cabinet that I previously showed you however the repair job did leave uh, a crack that I didn't want to show once I, I added the paint. So I'm adding some wood filler here to, to smooth out the best I can. And once that wood filler was completely dry, I took my orbital sander um, using 120 grit and smoothed out the, the wood filler so you couldn't tell that it had been repaired. And I'm taking that 120 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander and I'm going to just go over it lightly over the whole entire piece. There's a lot of stain that was on this piece and I just want to make sure that I get the shine off of that so my paint will uh, adhere better to the surface of the china hutch. Right here I'm using a little finger sander that I got from Lowe's. It, it's such a little dream. I love this thing. It's 120 grit as well. And here you can see I'm taking the clamps off that I had placed on here previously, getting ready to sand this, this cabinet door down and, and get it ready for paint. That little finger sander and I'm going in right on the edges where all of that hot glue residue was left from when I tried to to make this cabinet look all 80s country and I'm just really getting those areas good and, and smooth and finally time for the paint I am using a paint by Sherwin Williams it's a showcase brand. Uh, it's stain blocking paint with built-in primer. The, the shade is called Savory Beige and I'm using a flat paint because I don't want any kind of gloss on this. Uh, and the brush that I'm using is by Valspar. It's a, paint, uh, it's a little thin paint brush. I think it's like an inch with a, a little beveled edge. It's a trim brush. Here on the body of the cabinet, I switched my brush to the four inch brush to get all those larger surfaces. Mr. DIY helped me lift the cabinet up to lay it on its side so I can get those inside walls at a better angle. And now 
it is time to add the chicken wire where that ugly 70s style plastic window stuff was previously. Here I am measuring uh, both the length and the width so then I can get uh, the correct size with my chicken wire. Um, this was probably the most difficult part of the entire project was getting this fit and, and put on the door snug. I'm taking some wire cutters here and I'm going along uh, cutting up straight after I had measured and uh, working really hard trying not to poke myself too much. You, you might want to think about possibly wearing gloves if, if this is a concern of, of getting yourself poked. I, I didn't want to wear gloves at this point because I was afraid it would get in the way and I wouldn't be able to work as freely. The chicken wire I had already purchased over the summer from Lowe's. We had put up a, a little garden area in our backyard and, and I needed to, to fence it off because our St. Bernard and our boxer would have gotten in there and destroyed it. So this is leftovers from that summer gardening project. So here you can see I have already secured the chicken wire on the, the opposite end that's out of frame. I didn't include that because yours truly managed to staple it all down out of frame so there wasn't anything to see. But So here I stretched the chicken wire and uh, then went ahead and started adding my staples. As I added the staples, I took my wire cutters and trimmed off any excess pieces and then bent them over so they, they curled around the staple and there wasn't any jagged edges that could later snag on something or someone. it's time to do all of the prep work for the distressing part of the project. I'm taking my little finger sander and the 120 grit again and I'm going along the edges uh, sanding away some of that paint that I just worked so hard to put on. I want to make it look worn on the edges just like you know it would naturally wear and tear over the years. Um, so then it's it's ready to go whenever I add the antiquing wax here in, in a few moments. I had originally attempted to distress the main body of the cabinet with the finger sander like I did on the cabinet doors. However, I would have been here till the cows came home because it was not going very quickly. So I, I got brave and pulled out the orbital sander with 120 grit sandpaper. I went to town sanding all of the edges. Here I'm distressing the, the shelf, making some worn areas on the paint. It was it was really nerve-wracking, but at the same time it was kind of fun. And now it's time to add the antiquing wax. I used Krylon Chalky Finish Antique Wax that I purchased from Lowe's. It's the dark vintage shade. And I'm just, I'm using my, my chip brush, just a wider, uh, I believe it's a three inch chip brush, and I'm applying the wax. You'll, you'll see as the process goes along here, I'm, I'm being a little conservative with it because I'm not really sure what it's gonna do to all of that paint that I put on. And so I didn't, I, I, I was scared it was gonna make it too dark. So, so I only did like a little area and then wiped it off. But you'll see as the process goes along, I get a little bit braver and uh, add, add it into bigger areas before I wipe. And it turns out just so beautiful. 
Incidentally, I'm I'm just using an old sock that Mr. DIY got a hole in. He's he's notorious for getting holes in his socks. So I've got him trained to where he saves them all for me now so I can use them in my DIY projects. So just an old sock. I'm removing all of the or most of the antique wax that I just applied. where your girl put on her big girl panties and got a little braver with the antiquing wax. I did the whole entire door before I wiped it off and it turned out just gorgeous. I, I love this stuff. It, 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 I, I highly recommend it. Because this product is a wax, it it serves as a protectant on the paint without, you know, compromising the integrity of the, without making it glossy, like I was trying to avoid, um, I didn't want to put anything glossy on it, so I really like the fact that this protected, put like a little shield on the paint, even though the, the guy at Lowe's said that the type of paint that I chose would be easy to clean, it just didn't feel like it would be, so I, I just felt a lot better covering over it with something to, to help seal it in. And here you can see all well, my bionic painting and rubbing that, you know, you I really had to put a lot of elbow grease into this. It it was a little bit of a, this was the harder, not really harder in, in skill as it was just a lot more work uh, wiping it off and getting it to the, the way I wanted it to look. And now we're adding all of the hardware back onto the doors and getting those attached to the body, putting this girl back together so she can shine in her new look. I love how this all turned out. everyone with her new farmhouse makeover all staged out with my beloved antiques and a, a little vine of some greenery to just give her a little unique flair I love her so much I loved her in the 80s when I bought her and I love her even more now that chicken wire just adds a special touch that just gives her the, her own unique look. All of this distressing on the edges makes her look really old. She is an old girl, but makes her look even older. 
If you liked this DIY, please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, add your comments, share with your friends. It really helps our channel to grow and we can bring you more DIYs. And as always, hit that notification bell so you know when we upload future videos. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. started off bad killer all right I gotta remember to look at the dots not myself okay hello everyone and welcome back to disasters and DIYs my name is Janie and today I'm gonna bring you along on the process that it took to give this old girl behind me a major facelift I took her from an outdated 70s 80s style China hutch and brought her into the current, uh, current what? Brought her into modern day. Okay. <clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and today I am going to bring you along on the process that it took me to bring this old girl. Uh, that's not what I want to say. Sounds good. Mr. DIY, he's so supportive. Hello everyone and welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and today I'm gonna to bring you along on the process. Dexter, why are you drinking water when I'm doing an intro? Dude. Thank you, thank you buddy. Hello everyone and welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and today I'm going to bring you along on the process that I went through to give this girl behind me a major facelift. She started out an outdated 70s, 80s style corner china hutch that I brought into this modern day as a rustic, old fashioned, I know that sounds kind of funny, but I was on to something. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie, and today I'm gonna bring you along on the process I went through to bring this girl a major facelift. She started out a 70s, 80s style China Hutch, and now she is a rustic farmhouse, more modern decor piece. I know that sounds kind of funny because I just said she was outdated and now I made her old, but it's, ugh. Dexter, what am I supposed to say? Hello everybody, welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie, and today I'm gonna bring you along on the process that I went through to bring this old girl behind me on a major, ugh, that's not it! Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie, and I am gonna bring you along on the process that I went through to bring this girl along on a, ugh, I want to give her a facelift, not bring her along on a facelift. That sounds stupid. Hey, okay. Welcome back. What? By the time you didn't say welcome back, you just said welcome to. Okay. I think welcome back is better. Thank you, Mr. DIY. 